Hello and welcome. I want to show you how to use the ERAPLAN software by an example garden. First, we need to import a PDF if we want to work on an existing layout after importing by marking two known points with a known distance between them. We can make the drawing proportional. We know this section is 12 meters in reality. We enter this and the program resizes it. Now we need to start placing the shapes of the lawn areas to be irrigated. It's better to do this in smaller parcels rather than laying down one complex shape, though that would probably work too. Let's do it from one complex shape now. Let's start from here. This part can't be properly irrigated anyway. You don't need to place the control points too densely, because the program automatically wants to put a sprinkler head at every point. So we should place the outlines with sparser distribution, but still, so that the sprinkler heads can manage the irrigation. I've selected the area, and if we click on the Sprinklers tab, we can do a test distribution. Hmm, this is completely fine here. We tried the black ones too, these have different parameters. Well this isn't bad either, but the previous one seems better. This, this will definitely be too big. A 3500 series sprinkler head won't be good here. Let's mark this small lawn area here too. This is how it should be, theoretically. Hmm. If we want, we can select different types of sprinkler heads here. We can even irrigate with pro spray heads, despite having rotor heads in the other parcel, if we feel like it. Though obviously using one type for everything is ideal because of the different irrigation intensities of different sprinkler heads. The program takes this into account, it's more important for zone creation. It puts one type of sprinkler head in one zone, it won't put different types in the same zone. Now that we have the sprinkler head distribution, we could practically install these sprinkler heads. They're in ideal locations, the overlap is optimized. We can see what types of sprinkler heads are needed where. For example, in this corner, an MP corner. Because within 90 degrees, in this product family, only the corner sprinkler head exists corner. We can see that MP2000 is needed in this large 90 degree corner and in this 1 megapixel 1000. Here in the front, MP1000 sprinkler heads are needed. We can see a list of necessary sprinkler heads, their unit water discharge, opening angle, radius, and exact type. Varies 4. Based on this, we can even order them. Here, we can read. The system's total water usage is almost 32 liters, with 27 sprinkler heads. Grace for it. The next step in the plan is designing the zones. The program does this for us too. We just need to specify the pump or water source capacity. Let's say it's 20 liters. Then it starts creating the zones. However, However, before we create them, we should pay attention that it starts pairing sprinkler heads into zones, and it's probably not favorable for us if these first few sprinkler heads are in the same zone as, say, some sprinkler head near the house. This could cause problems with piping, and there might be completely different sun exposure conditions. So to avoid pairing those, we need to place walls, and then they definitely won't end up in the same zone. So let's place a wall here. We don't need to bring it very close to the surface, it's enough to place it a bit further in, because this way it won't create a cluster that crosses this red line. And in this section too, let's say there are different sun exposure conditions, we don't want this head in this corner to be in the same zone with something else, 
because here the sun exposure is completely different. So let's put a wall here too. Now we specify the pump's performance at 3.5 bars, or if not a pump, then the network water. Let's say it's 20 liters. OK. And it starts calculating the zones. It's doing some calculations. We can see that it planned a separate zone for the sun exposed part. So where there's much more sun versus less sun, we can set that with a different program. And here there's a completely separate zone. Let's move the plan a bit so it's more readable. Only 5 liters worth of sprinkler heads went to that one zone, but there's no point combining it with other sprinkler heads, because when a zone is running, we don't want sprinkler heads going off randomly in different parts of the area. We want them concentrated. Zone Zone 2 has 14 liters worth of sprinkler heads, and the third has 13, rounded. This is a good even distribution as far as possible. If needed, we'll need to install flow control valves to balance these differences. The program immediately calculates the recommended pipe diameter too. We can see that 20 millimeters pipe diameter would be sufficient based on water pressure. But let's calculate the piping too. So the valve box, let's say the computer will be here, and the water source is here because there's a small valve box. And we see that the 20 millimeters pipe diameter holds up, although for the green and blue zones there will be significant pressure loss due to pipe length. But the program automatically keeps this in check. If it's above one bar, it will choose a larger pipe diameter. We can see that the zones need about 40 meters of pipe. Up here in the summary, we can see all the necessary pipe quantities. We need 150.41 meters of 20 millimeters pipe, including the pipe from the water source to the valve box. We'll need approximately 5 meters of electrical cable. And from the water source to the valve box, we need 24.5 meters. This 24.5 meters is included in the sum total. And here we can add the unit prices, and then we can roughly see the cost of these pipes. And while it's a beta function, the program also gives an approximate trench length, which is about 117 meters. But this should be taken with a grain of salt. And it also depends on how one usually does the zone pipe connections and trenching. But this is a good first direction. Beautiful.